people left Afghanistan and came into Pakistan and they were kept in tents, millions of people came. Mm-hmm. And the US was involved in, in Rambo 2 is a movie that actually kind of is set in that time. Rambo 3, I think, where he goes to, the, to save somebody, some soldier or whatever. So this is that era when the, so uh, that was a big change. And it was, a, it, it almost seems that those events happened completely randomly. That Russia invades Afghanistan, um, people get pushed out. America decides that we need to push Russia back and we need to arm the Afghans to fight against the Russians. Mm. And the Mujahideens come t- together. The Mujahideens end up, their children are born in Pakistan and those children are called the Taliban. The, I remember that era because you could buy American products like cheese and biscuits and cookies and cigarettes for almost pittance because they would just come in huge <laughs> quantities and then they would be bootlegged kind of by the people who would instead of going to Afghanistan, they'd be sold in Pakistan for a higher price. So my challenge was that how do you grow a plant in space and make sure that the water goes to the root? Hmm. Then there is no gravity and you don't know if the root is going. Down. There's no way for the root to know that it's got to go down. There's nothing huh. pulling it down. Wow. And the shoot doesn't, there is no gravity, right? We are now in, so the root would grow upwards. Yeah. But the root always follows where the water is. Mm. But if you have a black box, if I give you a black box, like in this water thing, where is, um, and I, how do I tell where the root is? It's impossible, right? It's mm. nowhere, it, it, there's a plant growing in it. So my experiments were to find where the water is. The way I look at it is that we have to have a crazy aspiration. And we have to make this statement that we can go there and then start. You only look for things mm. that you're, you only find things that you're looking for. So look for something amazing because then you'll find something amazing. Again, I read Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And that book always, you know, after every five years, you should read it mm. because mm. it puts you back on the. And I, and I was reading it and I was thinking that I, I need to find a purpose. And I, I really despise this word passion, this word passion now, because I think passion is something you have for, you know, let's say football or cricket. You can't do it for 24 hours. Mm. But purpose is something that persists. It's 24 hours with you. You sleep mm. with it, you eat with it, you live with it. That's your purpose. Between that journey of your purpose, you can have passion and think like Be- because there is no time left. We have finally come to that point in our world's journey that if we don't do something about it, this automation driven um, success that will create relentless profit without using more people, more expenditure. Now these companies can grow even bigger because they are so automated, so good, so efficient. The fear is, and this is, the sort of doomsday fear, but it could happen that the people that will be left behind will be so far, their brains will evolve differently for the next hundred years because they will be so, uh, their children will go to different schools. Their anger will lead to all kinds. So there will be first time there will be a bifurcation in society and it would be irreversible Mm. because if we don't, do something about this inequality and things like that. We have to be sensitive to these things. You can't keep a you know, few hundred million people of the world left behind. It's dangerous. It's bad strategy.